Now that we have our strip foundation drawn, our wall on top of it, and our concrete infill, we can start to locate all our details for the floor. So the first thing we need to do is place in the hardcore. Now the hardcore is laid down in rows of 150 millimeters. The reason for this is that after 150 millimeters, the bottom parts of the hardcore will not be compacted. And it is important that the hardcore is fully compacted or you will have structural issues. So we're going to lay out the hardcore in layers of 150 millimeters. And we're going to have four layers of 150 millimeters. So the first thing we can do is mark on 150 millimeters from the top of our foundation four times. So one, two, three, four. And on the top one, we can draw that fully across. Second one, we will do the same. And the same with the third one. Up. From the edge of foundation, we're going to draw it at 45 degrees just to fill in the hardcore, like so. Now, to indicate that this is hardcore, we generally draw in numbers of rocks. On top of the hardcore, we're going to place 40 mm sand blind. The sand blind then acts as a protective layer for the radon barrier. If the radon barrier was placed directly down on top of the hardcore, what would happen is the plastic would rip, and that would obviously allow for radon to enter the house. Okay, so 40 mm on top of the hardcore. And we can continue our line across. And we indicate our sand with a number of dots. If you have colouring pencils either, you can always shade in the items and use grey or yellow for sand. Now, taking a red pen, we are going to draw in a radon barrier. So our radon barrier is placed directly on top of our sand. So we're going to cross like that. It comes up along the side of the wall starts the top of our fourth block comes out through the cavity down along the side of the wall directly across the exit that ensures that the whole house is protected from the ingress of radon gas and as we know radon gas can be very harmful to the humans. So directly on top of the radon barrier we're going to place our insulation. So it's a 100 mil insulation. We we'll make our mark on top of that and draw our line. In. Again with insulation we indicate with angled lines like so. Now, on top of that, we can mark in our 150mm subfloor. So our subfloor is going to be concrete, so we can indicate that the exact same as we have done with our foundation and the infill in the caption. However, at the position on the edge of the internal wall, we need to mark in some insulation, as if there was no insulation placed here, we would create a cold bridge. And a cold bridge would be an area where heat would escape through the floor out into the cavity and you would be losing a lot of heat loss. So insulation at the edge of the subfloor is 50 millimeters. So we can mark that in and indicate it with our hatching. This helps prevent heat loss and prevent cold bridges forming. 
So we can now indicate accomplish sub or exactly like we've done with other parts of concrete. And finally, on top of that, we're going to place our finished floor. So in this instance, we're going to use a tongue and groove timber floor of 25 mil thickness. And I can indicate that it's tongue and groove by drawing in my little tongue. Now, to complete the drawing, we must indicate inner cavity or insulation. So, inner cavity, we have 100 mil of insulation. So, we can measure out 100 mil from the internal wall and draw our line up. Again, we can indicate that it's insulation by drawing our hatched lines. We can also mark in our internal plaster. So our internal plaster is 12 millimeters. We we'll measure out just over a millimeter and draw in our line. We can now come over to our left hand side and from the top of the third block we can draw in our ground on the outside. We can also mark in our external render, again 18 millimeters, and draw that directly in. The last thing we need to indicate on our drawing is our DPC. Our DPC is placed 150 millimeters above the ground level to prevent any rising damp from getting up into the blocks. So from the top of our fourth block, which is the first block above the ground level, we can mark in our DPC. You can either use a blue or black pen. And the same can be done on the internal wall. And that is our DPC mark. So that is our strip foundation with a 350mm cavity wall placed on top with all the necessary floor details. Now it is also important to indicate on our drawing all the various measurements and names of the components. So we can draw them in. So you put in our measurements for our foundation. So by lightly drawing a line, putting two neat arrows either side, we can mark in 1050 millimeters. Same can be done for our side. It's always important to draw them nice and neat. Include the arrowheads, so 350 millimeters. We can mark in our hardcore. So drawing a line and placing an arrow. 150mm hardcore okay. 100mm external wall DPC, 150 millimeters minimum above ground. Your internal wall. Yeah. 
and you can also finish off by putting, indicating a number of other dimensions.